Let's talk to Link in Washington. Oh, Link's back. Yay. Yeah. Link, you're live with Eric and V. What would you like to talk about? Hey. Um, hey. Uh, hi again and all that. Hello. Uh, I just, uh, real quick, sorry, I just wanted to say thank you guys for how patient you were last week with uh, that call. It was very helpful. So, uh, awesome. What would you like to talk about today? Uh, so it's funny because I was kind of, I was listening in, in uh, sort of in the tail end of the last call and he was talking about how like it was like a really long period of, of being sort of biased towards what she already believed or I'm sorry, that's, she isn't right, but I don't know what the, that's okay. For. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. They them, but you're that's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Uh, sorry. When I looked up, uh, or when I heard uh, another episode, you said some somebody said something about a cat cyborg, and I don't know what the pronouns are for that. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah. So, uh, um, but you were talking about how you were, you had been sort of looking into it for a long time. And I'm in sort of a similar boat where like, um, I would say for probably the last four years, I've sort of been on this sort of, uh, journey towards skepticism. If that makes any sense. Yeah. And, uh, it's my, my, my religious beliefs are sort of on their last legs. Uh, and yeah. all, a- all I have that's clinging me on to it is like, uh, like I, for example, I know that I've been indoctrinated into it, but it's a, uh, it's kind of hard thing to beat. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It oh yes, it, it is super uncomfortable. Um, so, yeah. uh, so, so you've got a couple more beliefs that are that are hanging on, like, um, like Mufasa, and we're we're just gonna we're just gonna mm-hmm. claw That's... those beliefs off the edge. Wow. <laughs> What do you, what do you want to, which one, it looks like you want to talk about Pascal's wager today. Traumatize my inner child. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I kind of wanted to bring up uh, Pascal's wager in that, like, I, I recognize that Pascal's wager can't get you to um, one religion specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, it just kind of gets you to the concept of religion uh, at best, but it there's, I, I don't know if Pascal's wager was, was the right. Oh, hello. Hi, uh, we're, we're listening. Yeah, we've got you. Oh, I'm sorry. My, my phone <laughs> beeped for some reason. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, I don't know if Pascal's wager was the right, was the right uh, thing that I meant to talk about. It was, it was more that um, my phone is beeping for some reason. It, it, it's more just the concept of hell and like I don't want to burn forever for for seemingly no reason. Yeah, yeah. that that's that's valid. Neither do I. No, no, it does not sound like yeah. a good time. No, um, I, I wouldn't think so. No. Yeah, but, but part of the response there is how many different hells are you afraid of going to? Mm-hmm. Well, some of them, I'm, it's going to sound dumb, but some of them don't seem that bad. Like Hades in Greek mythology doesn't seem that bad. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. So I, really, ultimately, one of the things that kind of gave me comfort is realizing that if if we if we expand out Pascal's wager, then we have infinite numbers of God beliefs that have infinite hells that, you know, you're just basically throwing a dartboard, uh, you know, throwing a dart at an infinitely large map and hoping you hit it. Um, and the the threat of hell is just infinitely large at that point. Um, so we're all kind of boned. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, the, the fact that I was especially afraid of the hell that I was told about as a kid and not so afraid of other versions of hells. I'm, I'm not super, I'm not super afraid of uh, Mormon um, uh, terrestrial existence. Um, I'm not super worried mm-hmm. about 
um, ideas where, you know, it's just outer darkness or, you know, separation from God. Um, so what is it about that? And I think really what it comes down to is trauma. It comes down to having had that just burned into you. I mean, it's the same kind of thing that you've got to separate from when you, you talk about death in general. You know, the mm -hmm. idea that you're going to get to see them again means that you may not have given yourself the chance to grieve as much as you had. And even worse, what if you never got the chance to make amends? What if you never got to fix something in a relationship because you're like, ah, you know what? It's just too hard. I'll do it when we're, when we're in heaven. I mean, right. there, there, there's so much there that, you know, once you wind up decoupling those, you wind up in a lot of ways, I don't know about what do you, I, I, there was grieving. I, I, it, it hit in a big way, realizing that a lot of people that I thought I was going to see again, I'm never going to see again. And so I, I'm, I'm drawing that parallel because the only reason I was grieving a second time is because I was sold some crap. I was yeah. sold a lie. I was sold bad information. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't be missing it if someone hadn't told me I was going to get it. You know, if you were going to tell me I'm going to get a million dollars tomorrow, I'd get really, really excited. And then when tomorrow doesn't come, yeah. I'd be really sad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's only there because I was yeah. sold on it. Yeah, it, it's, it's only there because I was sold on it. It's kind yeah, of... Yeah, no, it's, it's like, it's... Sorry. No, it, it's okay. The, 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 the way... Um, it's uh, it's breaking your leg to sell you a crutch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think I think it was Hitchens that said, "Building or creating someone sick and commanding them to be well." Mm -hmm. It's. It, it doesn't make that much. It, it it has never really made that much sense to me, but it's yeah. it's like, it seems it seems to me like this. This is going to sound like a very very unchristian thing to say. And I'm aware of that, but it seems to me like if God created hell, then the only person who deserves to go to hell is God, because that's the only infinite crime. Ooh. Can Damn. we put that on a shirt? Damn. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. I, yeah, I think that's one of the best quotes on this show. That, yep. That's fantastic. We, we have been put to shame. <laughs> I love it. That is really good. I agree with you. It's yeah, it's just it's the 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 idea for an infinite punishment for a non-infinite crime seems infinitely unjust. So, it, <laughs> by the way, the live chat's going nuts. Yeah, they're like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> Link's, got the, Link's got the mic drop of the week. Very nice. <laughs> Pan in next week. Yeah. It's been linked on the show. Right. It's like, hi, I'm here now. I've been conscripted. <laughs> That's good, man. And here's here's another thing that I know helped me a lot while I was grappling with a few leftover thoughts and leftover emotions from my time being indoctrinated, which is really just understanding mm -hmm. the the biological reason why and there's this thing called neuroplasticity and it means that you can create neural pathways in your brain that allow you to get from point a to point b faster that's why it gets easier to do things as you practice them like if you start playing piano it's going to be difficult and then as you continue to practice that will get easier because your brain is actually coding certain neural pathways in this thing called myelin and myelin is a physical thing that makes your brain able to go from point A to point B easier. That's muscle memory, that's repetitive thoughts, that's all of this. And if you were indoctrinated as a kid and told these certain thought patterns over and over again, that's physically encoded in your brain right now. That's not just you hanging on to things or something from the outside trying to get in and tell you things. That's a physical reality in your brain and it is going to take time to actually build new neural pathways and shut them down. It is very possible. I've done it and it's ultimately the most impactful way of, of healing that I've found from this religious indoctrination. But it is a physical thing that you're going through right now. So I'm not surprised that this is something that keeps coming up. And I'm certainly not 
uh, concerned about it, if that makes sense. I'm not worried that somehow it's you tapping into some external reality. It's you dealing with the fact that your brain has been literally molded by this indoctrination and you have to go through the work of moving those neural pathways into different form formations. And if that's something you want to do, it's doable. Therapy helps, but it's not always the only thing that can help with that. So is stuff like having conversations like this and, and making yourself aware of the fact that's what you're going through. So there's also that component to it as well, which I know I found helpful when I was going through it. Yeah, I I really have not. I, I was going to say cognitive behavioral therapy and you're like, yeah, therapy and talking. You, you, what be said <laughs> as far as that point's concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I think I think one of my one of my problems is that uh, I consider my uh, like a lot of people can like say that like my parents are like hyper religious, which in my case is relatively true. But like or they can say that like my my pastor was was very very strict or something like that, but. I would I would honestly put a lot of the indoctrination sort of on my own shoulders. I think that mine is sort of relatively self-induced. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense. Oh yeah, but, no, uh, totally. Um and it doesn't make it yeah. any less impactful. You can you can in the same way you can decide to play piano and and get good at it, you can decide on a thought pattern or a belief system and get good at thinking in that way. Um, it doesn't mean that it's any less impactful to your brain if you were yeah. the one who put yourself in that position. And certainly that's not something to kick yourself about. That's that's preferred in society, right? That's the thing that you're supposed to do. That will that will create. Uh, the conception that you are a good person, that you're trustworthy, all of these things. So of course you're going to put yourself in that position. Right. But moving away from that, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easier to move away from or that you should be able to just flick it off like that. Um, so, yeah. And and a lot of us, that we we do that for the rest of our lives. Yeah. I, I know personally I was I was taught shame in a very real way and I still deal with that. Mm -hmm. Um and is it helping anybody? No. But when you're taught to punish yourself like that, you, yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're going to continue to find different neural pathways constantly. Hell is a big one. It is one of the biggest mm -hmm. ones. It is the one that we talk about the most on this show because so many people, that's their last thing that really will get them out. But you're going to continue to do that. And it's not just going to be religion based. It's going to be things that were informed by your worldview on religion. And uh, you're going to say, oh, wait, I used to not like that person because they weren't religious. I still don't like that person, but I don't know why anymore. There's no basis for it. I should like them now. And so you're con it's, con it's a constant process and it should be, but just because it's taking you a while doesn't mean that you're behind. It doesn't mean that you should have already gotten over this. This is your process. It's your brain. Mm -hmm. And depending on how eager you are to change it, it will take, you know, more or less time and both are okay. And, and just like grief, it will it, it can come in waves. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can you can wake up one day and be like, "What am I doing?" You know, th there are people who say, "Oh, I just in a moment I changed my mind completely." Mm -hmm. That's very hard for me to believe mm -hmm. uh, because you you do you, you double back and, and and you you look at it again and you look at it again and and the more and more you go back, the more you kind of ground yourself. And the more you work on on those tools, how do I know what I know? Okay, what do I have? What do we have? Let's build up. Mm -hmm. And so if you have one of those days where it's just like when fear strikes, that's it that is also normal. Yeah. It's it's yeah. that's what that's what happens with trauma. That's 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 a um that's a, it's a form of PTSD, actually. Uh, we had Daryl on. Uh, uh, Daryl Ray uh, from Recovering from Religion actually talked about religious trauma syndrome. And and that is just way more prevalent than most people know. Mm. Yeah. It's it's funny because like I felt like I was on I kind of felt like I was on this like uh, this this track this like this road out because honestly I, I think of 
I think that the only problem I have with the show is that I'm all caught up. Now I have to wait until Sunday. <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> like I, I've watched a lot, like a lot of skeptic content. Um, and I, I was on this, like this easy road out and then 2020 hit and everything went to absolute shit. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. <laughs> now like it's, I don't know. It's just, it's weird. It it is kind of thrown me for a loop a little bit, which I think it has to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it can be very tempting to, to move back into a comfortable space where everything's going to be okay. And this is all part of a plan. And, you know, all of those kind of uh, fluffy language that uh, religion uses to make you feel okay about things. But what I'm seeing more and more is that most of the stuff that we're dealing with right now is people. It's not like there are there are elements that are not they're outside of our control. But the, the reason things are so bad is because people are not acting in the way that they should. And a lot of that is due to the fact that people are willing to sit back and say, everything will be fine. God's got it. It's part of a plan. I'm not going to worry about it. So that comfort can come at the cost of actual progress and the safety of other people. So I understand yeah. completely that this is something that, you know, might kick you back a couple of steps. That's fine. It's 2020. It doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that what we're going with? That's what, that's what we're going with. It doesn't count. It's a, it's a gap year from life. Okay. <laughs> yes, that is the year. I'm fine with that motto for this year. There you go. But uh, so be gentle with yourself. If you have to take some steps back and reevaluate, that's fine. Everybody's doing that in some way, shape or form this year. Um, but mm -hmm. the fact that you're aware that this is an environmental thing that's pushing you in a direction and that it's influencing the way you're progressing is very good. Mm -hmm. And as long as you are aware of that and aware that, OK, I'm thinking this thing it's a result of what I'm experiencing. It's a result of what's going on in the world. How do I decide if this is accurate or just my reaction? Is the whole ball game? Okay. Yeah. It sounds like you're doing good, though, man. And um, keep in touch. Let us know how you're doing. Yeah. Also, also if uh, you're not um, if you're not busy through the week, um, I've been doing little lunchtime live streams on Facebook. Um, there's a new Facebook uh, uh, fan group for Talkie then. Um, lots of stuff and uh, a really awesome community. Also, our Discord is awesome. So, definitely. Yeah, check I, I joined that. Um, nice. Perfect. I, Wonderful. Good. Great. Then we'll see you after the show. I, I recommend it. Yeah. They, <laughs> they've, been, they've been very welcome. Well, uh, welcoming. So. Oh, good. Good. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Man. We're going to head on to the next call. Take care of yourself, okay? Yeah. Thank you again so much. Absolutely. I love that Nightbot has officially like gotten on the link train. <laughs> Five people, thank God, is the only being deserving of hell. 